Hi guys, I just thought, you know, today would be a great day to come on and answer your guys' questions that you have had regarding my conversion to my religion that I am. And, sorry, okay, my screen got really dark there for a minute, I'm like, anyways, um, I thought that this would be like the perfect time to just sit and share my story and that way then it can, you know, it can definitely answer some of your guys' questions and again, if you guys have more questions, just shoot them towards me and you know I'll answer them. So um, I want to begin this video by making it very clear that I am not sharing this video to push my choice of faith upon anybody. I simply am explaining how I converted to Islam um, by my choice uh, for your guys' um, questions and curiosity. And so I just want to make that very, 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 very clear that I will never push my religion upon anybody. That is not my job. Um, I'm here to answer questions, share my story because I've been asked, and then leave it at that. If anybody has any further questions after my video, you guys are more than welcome to message me, um, private message me, however you guys want to do it, and that's totally fine. But I just don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable because definitely that's not, that is not what I'm trying to do or promote. So anyways, I just wanted to say that before I started. So I converted five years ago. It was June 14th of 2014, no, 13. Yeah, 13, 2013, wow, no, time goes by so fast. But yes, I converted June 14th of 2013. And <clears throat> when I did that, Prior to even the thought of converting, um, I did a lot of research. I, you know, I didn't even know what Islam was, um, to be honest, until after I went to Egypt and was really like focusing on my husband. And um, of course, he is Muslim. And just watching how, you know, he would pray and he would read the Quran and you know, just seeing how people treated each other and how his mother was. And that's what kind of struck me because I, again, I didn't even know what Islam was. I didn't even hear that before. In fact, um, I thought Islam when I, before I knew anything about it, I thought that was Hindu. I thought that was an Indian religion. Um, and I, I thought it was Hindu. I didn't even know the word Islam at the time. So when I went back to Egypt, you know, I started asking Ollie questions, you know, and um, just trying to get a little bit of information just so I kind of knew what was going on. And um, I had heard some really negative things about the religion be right before I had left to Egypt, but I think that that was more of a scare source. I don't think that it was out of love that I was being told the things that I was shared about the religion and stuff. And I think a lot of it was covered through media. So... There's that. So when I went to Egypt, I was expecting that, you know, I mean, that the religion was a really bad religion for what I only knew of it. But I decided to still go with my heart and still pursue with my re relationship with Ali and um, pursue with my heart on where I felt I should be going. So we got married in 2009 and he didn't join me until 2010 to um the u.s and or 2011 sorry and until then i just did a you know i did some research and watched some sorry i'm shaking my camera watching some youtube channels and um just kind of doing my own like learning up on it the best i could um and then when he came to the states i would see him faithfully praying and faithfully sitting down and reading the Quran when it, you know, was the time for him to sit down and read. And, um, his actions spoke of the religion so highly and 
the way that he was, you know, and I would tell him, you know, thank you so much for treating me so good. And he would say, for, you know, for the sake of our religion that I believe in, we are to treat our women as queens. And that's what I'm going to treat you as nothing less. And, you know, that meant a lot to me. But again, I still really didn't know a whole, whole lot about it. So I would just ask him questions here and there, you know, like just off off the topic questions and he was so good about answering them and um, so I again I kept doing more research reading um, I would sit down and read the Quran and he had gotten me before I left Egypt my gift one of my gifts were a Quran in English and I just wanted to take that back because it was such a source of history um, and I felt really close to when I took that I felt very close to him because I can see how um, how much his faith, you know, belonged in his life. So if I had a piece of that, I felt so close to him. And so that's one of the reasons I was so excited when he got me the Quran before I even really started technically reading it. But it was in English and it also had the Arabic um, on the side so I could read it and understand what I was reading. So I would do a little bit of the Quran reading and again, I would do more YouTube channels and um, Googling and I started asking, you know, questions about, you know, the steps of conversion. And, you know, he had asked me at the time, like, are you thinking of converting? And um, I was like, well, no, I was like, you know, I'm just, I'm just asking, you know, I mean, I was basically, I guess you would say, I called myself a Christian when I had very first got with him. Um, because that was the religion that was chosen for me as a child. Everybody that I lived with were Christians. And um, I can't say that I fully ever embraced the, you know, the faith of Christianity in the sense that it was chosen for me. I didn't have a choice. I didn't, you know, that's just what it was. We got up on Sunday mornings. We went to church, you know, Wednesdays we would maybe go to church if we felt like it. Um but you know that that is what it is so when i married him you know i didn't cover i didn't wear a hijab i didn't you know i wore tank tops and shorts and um you know i just lived regular life and he married me just the way i was and you know and i asked him i said you know with me marrying you and me not being what you are is that gonna make a difference you know because i my biggest thing was I did not want to have to change my life just because I was marrying somebody. And he said, absolutely not. He said, I'm marrying you the, just the way you are. And if I had an issue with that, um, then we, you know, I wouldn't pursue in a relationship. The one and only speculation that he ever had was he asked me at the very front of our, you know, conversation even starting, he said, do you smoke? And I said, no. And which I didn't. And he's like, oh, okay. I said, well, why? And he said, I said, why is that? A, would, that would that be a deal breaker? And he said, yeah. And I said, oh, okay. I said, well, no, I'm not a smoker. Now at the time I thought, well, maybe he didn't smoke, but he smokes. <laughs> but he just, he just doesn't want the wife that he chose to marry <clears throat> to smoke because of course we're the ones the women are the ones that carry babies and so not only would we be hurting ourselves but we would also be hindering you know um the safety safety of our babies and so that was just one of his things you know and and i it had no issue with it because i never smoked so i was just like yeah whatever um so anyways so when i married him it was very known that I was not going to change. I didn't have any, any type of feeling that I was going to convert to his religion. I mean, nothing. And for four years, I just, I lived life the way that I did from the day that I married him. I, you know, wore what I wanted and, you know, I would always be respectful with what I wore only because that's how I just always am. I would never go out of the house with really short shorts or, you know, um, tight shirts. It just isn't my, that's just not me. Um, you know, but would I wear a tank top? Of course I would. Would I wear capris? Yeah. Um, but you know, I always did it very tastefully. I didn't, I just wasn't that type of a person. 
So, um, June 14th, 2013, I had to make sure I got my year right. I went to a parade here in Portland, Oregon, and I seen some ladies walking by and they were Muslims. And I just, I thought in my mind, I said, my God, they are so beautiful. Their hijabs are so beautiful. The way that they carry themselves are so beautiful. They are just beautiful. And again, I have been doing research prior to this for four years, asking lots of questions to Ali. And, you know, and if he didn't have the answer, he would go find the answer and come back. And uh, so I was obviously dipping my toes to just find out more about it. And I felt like I was getting pretty close to um, making a decision, a decision that was going to change the rest of my life in the way that something that I was choosing to believe in, but I wanted to do it on the right terms, the right reasons, and not regret something that I was going to choose to do. So that night I had seen these Muslim ladies and they were walking by and all that. And for some reason, something in my heart just felt at peace. And I was like, I think I want to convert, but I don't want that word think. I want to be like, I know I want to convert. So I kept pondering that thought for the rest of the night. And then when I went home, you know, I just, I didn't say anything to Ollie about it or nothing like that. You know, I just kept thinking about it. And that night I went to bed and I had a dream. And in my dream, I had a dream that I converted. And it was so real, so real, that when I woke up the next morning, I was like, I know what I want now. And I know what I feel is right. And I know what I have to do. So I went into the bedroom. It was really early in the morning. And I want to say it was like seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I woke Ollie up out of sleep. Like he was dead asleep. And I woke him up and he was like, yeah, what's up? But you know, because he, of course, why am I waking him up so early? And I said, I need you to sit up and I need to talk to you really quick. And he was like, okay, is everything okay? And I'm like, yeah, everything's fine. I just, I really need to talk to you. So he got up and, um, we were starting to talk and I said, um, I want to convert to Islam. And he looked at me a little bit strange. And I think it was because partly he was still trying to wake up <laughs> and he was like, really? And I was like, yeah, I want to convert. And he said, are you sure? And he said, the only reason why I'm asking, are you sure, is because I want to make sure, Amy, that you're doing it for you and for your own personal life. You're not doing it for me. I don't want you to convert because of me. You do not have to convert to be married to me. You don't have to change anything to be married to me. If you want to convert, I want you to convert because it's in your heart and you feel this is the right thing. But if you have any doubts or any reservations, please don't do it until you are fully ready if this is something you really wanna do. I just don't want you to do it because of me. And I was like, no, I wanna do this because I wanna do this. And he said, okay. So we took a drive, like he got up and took a shower and we drove up to Portland to a, a pretty good sized mosque up there. Um, Salem has a mosque, but it's very small. And um, we went and talked to the sheikh for a minute. And then um, I said my shahada, which is, you know, declaring that there is only one God. And, um, and then, you know, the whole shahada. And um, I was so happy. I was so excited. Like, I felt like such a sense of relief of something I knew I really wanted, but I wanted to make sure that A, I was doing it on the right timing and B, that I was truly, truly, truly knowledged enough of what I wanted. And when I was able to check mark both of those things off, I knew I was ready. And that day I put the hijab on and I started dressing modestly and I've never taken my hijab off since. Now, I'm gonna say, 
was it hard to convert? It was not hard to convert, but it was hard to change my dressing in a way because when you're a big person, you carry body heat already. Well, I converted in June, so we had the whole summer to go through. And my body was not prepared to be covered with the hijab, with my clothes, you know, covering. And that was a deep challenge. And I would, you know, I would say to Ollie, you know, at times, this isn't fair. Why do women have to, you know, cover, but men don't? And um, he said, because, you know, honestly, men are more likely to look at a woman in a sexual manner than a woman would sexualize a man in, in view. And that is why it is called for the women to cover modestly because your beauty is for me and me only. I, I, you don't want to share that beauty with everybody. That is something special between me and you. Now, would he walk around in a Speedo? Of course not. Well, I would never let him walk around in a Speedo. But, I mean, I'm just saying, like, you know, he still dresses properly. He wears shorts down to his knees. And, you know, he wears T-shirts, you know, and stuff. He doesn't wear, like, tank tops out. Um, but, I mean, it took, you know, it took probably a good two years of getting through summers where I wasn't about ready to pull my hair out in the sense that I was really warm. But now it's like my body has adjusted so much that like today, I mean, I'm sitting here in the car, it's 78 degrees and it doesn't even phase me at all. Like I'm really not hot. Um, and in fact, there's been just a very few handful of times where I've walked out of the house and I forgot my hijab and I will be like, I'm missing something. And then I'll be like, oh my gosh, I forgot my hijab. And I'll turn around and run back in the house and put it on. Or um, one day I had put my hijab in my purse because I sneak out sometimes from the door if I'm going somewhere without taking the kids. And so I will put it in my purse and then I'll sneak and get in the car and then I'll put it on. And one day I got like halfway down the road from my house and I'm like, God, this breeze feels amazing, but why is it feeling so good? And then I'm like, oh, no hijab. So I had to pull over and put my hijab on and stuff. But, you know, I mean, it's not made for, for women to suffer. Um, every Muslim lady that I have ever spoke to, with myself included, we don't feel, and I can speak for many of them, um, well, for millions of them, <laughs> we do not feel like we are forced to wear what we choose to wear. Um, we choose to wear what we choose to wear because that's what is called in our faith. And if you are truly invested in your faith and you truly follow what is called for you, you will do what is called. And so for me, and for the millions of other women that are, you know, Muslims, we don't feel like that is a forced upon thing because our husbands make us do it. Um, you know, my husband couldn't be any better of a husband than I could ever imagine. Um, he, you know, he respectfully treats me like a queen. And that's not everybody. I'm not speaking for everybody's husbands because there are some husbands that, you know, struggle with that, that are, you know, Muslims. Not every Muslim is a perfect Muslim, just like there is not one perfect human being. There's bad people in every religion. And it's so sad because for the longest time, you know, in the stereotypical way that I was told about Islam was what media has shown, which is obviously Islam is a bad religion. It is, you know, it is very vile. And if people would just take the time to really listen to a true Muslim, they would know honestly what the truth is and where that, um, where that truth comes from because we are, I have never in the five years that I have been converted have not run into one Muslim that was mean, rude, um, 
had bad things on their mind to hurt people. Um, everybody has always been very welcoming and opened armed and accepting. And, you know, and it's so sad because Islam is the religion of peace, but yet we get marked as the religion of whore, basically. And I'm not denying the fact that there have been many people that have proclaimed Islam as their religion and has went and bombed people and hurt people and did hurtful things. But also I know that there are other people in other religions that have done the same thing. So I'm so happy that I over overlooked all of that and did my own searching and did my own soul searching on the choices that I was going to make and knew from the day that I chose to convert that I was doing the right thing for me. Um, I have multiple, multiple, multiple friends that are non-Muslims and I would never push my religion upon any of them. Um, you know, if I go out in public with them, Sure, I'm going to have my hijab on and sure I'm going to dress modestly, but that's That's part of me. That's not me pushing myself on anybody and You know, I just knew that a lot of people had a lot of questions and I just wanted to answer Some of them which is the story of how I converted um, You know, of course I could probably go into a longer story about the whole in depth, but that is pretty much how it started and how I where I'm at today. Um, this is the first year that I was able to successfully make it through Ramadan fasting from start to finish, and that's been being a Muslim for five years. I've only done it once, so there was four years of you know fasting that I didn't do it. Did my husband force me to do it? No he leaves that for me. That is my choice. I asked him today, you know, because there was a conversation, um, that we were having, I don't know, a couple days ago. And, um, I said, you know, you made a comment that just say if something, God forbid ever happened to me and him and just say, we split up, um, you know, would I continue to be a Muslim? And the, you know, the answer is yes, because I didn't convert for him. I converted for myself and I embraced this faith 100% for my own beliefs and my own choices. But I came back on him and I said, so I have a question for you. Why is it so important as a man to remind their wife or daughter or mother to wear their hijab? And, you know, if the hijab is, you know, moved a little bit and exposing the chest a little bit, that a lot of times, you know, he'll gesture like, you know, it's it's flopping out or whatever. Um, I said, why is that your place to remind? And he said, well, here's the thing. He said, as the man of the home and as the husband, it is my duty to make sure that my wife is safe. My wife is covered for protection. And in the end of the days, I'm going to be asked by God about your actions because your actions reflect on me. And he's like, so yes, I do hold you accountable for what you've chosen, but it's not my choice. If you were to choose to take the hijab off 100%, I can't stop you. That is your choice. But sadly, I will be asked that as well, why you took your hijab off and why I didn't encourage you to keep it on and why I didn't help you continue to wear the hijab versus just letting you take it off and walk in the streets without it. So it was a really awesome answer because I wasn't expecting that answer to come back. And so I just, yeah, I, you know, I, I'm so sad that a lot of people think that the men are controlling and, you know, that the women have to be a hundred percent submissive and we don't have a life and we don't have a choice and we don't have a voice. And that is so the opposite because honestly, half of the women are the ones that run the houses <laughs> and the men just kind of follow behind. But when it comes to like, you know, finances and, you know, you know, protecting the family and, um, supporting and supplying for us, that is the man's duty and the man's job. And so that's where the man, 
Um, and so that's kind of where that lands. But I just wanted to get on here and share that story with you guys. Because I know, like I said, a lot of people have asked and have been wondering. So I thought that I would um, share that with you guys. And again, if you guys have any questions outside of what I've talked about and I didn't cover something, always feel free to ask. I am so 100% with asking rather than assuming. So if you wanna ask questions, I will answer you to the best of my ability. If I don't have the answer, I will definitely go and find the answer for you. So feel free to question me. Um, you know, I know that I receive hate for the choices of my, my choices of religion that I've choose to believe. And that's totally okay because sadly, some people don't know the truth and they just know what they've been told. And so, I don't hold them accountable for what they say. Have a great day and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.